swept up in today's independent music. Good morning, everyone. In case it's not morning where you're at, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. I am your host, Anthony Longhair Leclerc, and I'm joined by my fabulous co-host, the marvelous Marla Mouse McCarty. What's up, everybody? What is up? Um, my drink to you, every everyone watching, you, especially you, right there. Yeah, talking yeah. to you. Yeah, this episode brought to you by Jameson Ginger and Lime. Hashtag not a sponsor. Hashtag make us a sponsor. Hashtag fuck, fuck you, you pay, pay me. me. Um, so today we're trying something new. We are. Today is the first episode of Music Mysteries. Ooh. Ooh. Ah, that's terrifying. Um, is, it, is it really though? Your commitment to the bit is incredible. It's like I'm an actor or something. Yeah. Did you like train for that or something? <laughs> yeah, no, it's not like I went to school for three years for that. Oh, okay. Cool. Three. Condensed into two. So two. Two. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Okay, so, um, the way this music mystery thing goes is as follows. Uh, we ask people for questions about music. It can be any question about music, as long as music is involved in it. Can't guarantee we'll answer all of them. But, uh, just so anyone knows, anyone who watches this, send us your music questions. Throw them down in the comments, email them to us, Facebook message us, whatever. Send, send them by carrier pigeon. Sure. Um, to find out about the latest bard in the North Country or whatever. Um, so yeah, today our very first music question comes from a good buddy of mine, Andrew Hiscock, who yeah. is a fucking phenomenal axe thrower. Um, True story. In case you don't know what that is, it is the process of picking up an axe and throwing it. Wait, Clue? axe throwing means you throw an axe? Clue is in the title. What? It's like being a mage of magic. Oh my god, my whole life's been a lie. <laughs> yeah, so um, so Andrew is a phenomenal axe thrower who is involved. He's actually, during our time away, while uh, we're trying to flatten the curve, as everyone says, and blah, blah, mm-hmm. blah, 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 um, Andrew is a part of an Ontario team of axe throwers that is competing against the states. Mm-hmm. So it's the states and the provinces competing that's fun yeah super cool so their first stream i think is this weekend though i don't know when this episode will air so it might have been this past weekend who knows anyway Mm. uh, and they'll be playing oregon first and you know fuck them so uh (laughs) so they can go on the oregon trail that's right and And then get dysentery dysentery. (laughs) (laughs) so (laughs) So yeah, uh, so he'll be doing that. He's uh, doing axe throwing for charity as well. This is all online, by the way, so everyone's mm-hmm. streaming all of this stuff. And um, so also, shout out, he's a coach uh, along with me and a bunch of other buddies at Northern Experts. You can check them out online. Uh, they do, I'm pretty sure uh, they can work out getting you guys targets or whatever if you're interested in purchasing some for your back lot or whatever if you want the space to throw axes. Mm-hmm. And... Um, and then, of course, you should book with them when you can in the future. But aside from all that, and there will be more info in the description below about Andrew and the, the charity work that he's doing with the local charity, half the proceeds of his axe throwing stuff will go to uh, to a specific um, autism charity uh, that's local here. And uh, yeah, so make sure to check him out. Check out some fun axe throwing. It's not like you have anything better to do. And I mean, uh, speaking of nothing better to do. We're going to answer our first music question. Yes, we are. Uh, given to us by Andrew. Thank you very much, Andrew. Uh, I hope to see you on the stream sometime on Tuesday, by the way, so we can play some more Great Big C for you. Mm-hmm. So, that being said, Marla. Yes? <laughs> what genre slash generation of music has revolutionized modern music the most? In the last decade. In the last decade? Yeah. Oh. Right? Damn, that's a good question. Yeah. Hmm. In the last decade. Yeah, right? I'm like, I'm struggling because like, like, I... Because that's the thing. It's like, because you, before you said 
the last decade, I was going to be like, if it was the last century, I was going to hands down say the 60s. But, um... Well, that, that's just generation. Yeah. What about yeah. genre? Um, well... Oh, like in the last century or just like... Sure. If we were, if we were going to answer that question, we it's the 60s the last, and what? Yeah, the last... It would be rock music. Okay. Um, but in terms of the last decade, that's really interesting because like... Music is so broad now. That's the thing. It's like there's so many genres and subgenres of stuff that like it's it's really hard to to think of something. Yeah. But it I mean you also have to think that like 10 years ago now isn't as isn't as far away as you no, thought it was. No, it's like between 2010 and now. Yeah. Like um Fudge, man. Do you have an answer for that yet? Fuck no. I don't know. So, like... (laughs) Okay, so what... First of all, it's weird to say what generation revolutionized music in the last decade. What genre or generation? Both. What genre stroke generation has revolutionized Mm -hmm. modern music the most in the last decade? Well, if we're going to go generation style, I mean, I would say it's got to be, like... Like, Gen Z, like, the people who were born after the year 2000, like, people are getting super famous at a really young age in this day and age of music. I mean, you look at people like Billie Eilish, when she started, she was, like, 15, like, and she had, she was selling, like, out stadiums at, like, 15. It's ridiculous. Like, it's crazy. I mean, so, yeah, so I don't, I I should have confirmed with Andrew on this one, but Mm -hmm. when he says generation... I'm I'm kind of assuming that he means, like, what generation of music. Mm. So, like, when you said if it was the last century, you'd say the 60s. Mm. So, if you're thinking of generation as in era, as in Okay, whatever, what kind of like, music has influenced modern day, like, the music of the last 10 years the most? Yeah. I would say... I know definitely, at least in the, like, especially in the past, like, five years or so, a lot of people have really been bringing back the 70s in terms of music. Like, you listen to, like, and it's, and it spans, like, a couple of different genres, too, like, in terms of listening to rock music. Like, you get bands like the Sheepdogs and Greta Van Fleet that are, like, really hearkening back to that 70s Mm. Cal Rock vibe. And people, and even in, like, I mean, even bringing in, like, fashion, I guess, too, like, in the past five years or so, like, people have really started wearing more, like, 70s style clothing. Like, the 70s has definitely come back in terms of fashion. And I feel like music and fashion are definitely very intertwined. Um, But it also comes into play in pop music as well. Like, you know, you listen to... Bands like Daft Punk, bringing really bringing back that disco, like mm-hmm. like absolutely bringing back that like disco beat and like that whole vibe of this the seventies disco stuff is definitely coming back a bit in in some pop music, especially like in the beats of music. I find like some of them really have a disco beat to them. So like if we're going from that angle, I'm gonna say probably the seventies. And you also said the genres too. Yeah. So I figured I was going to differ with you on this one. Yeah. And I was right. So, <laughs> um, so my thought, I mean, I could throw part of it into the 70s, mm-hmm. some of the same genre, but I'm going to throw most of it into the 80s and I'm going to say pop and funk. Yeah, there's definitely that portion of it too, like the, especially 80s synth shit. Is Mm -hmm. really coming back. Like, you look at... uh, Sorry, I'll let you speak, but... Cool. Yeah. (laughs) So, because um, with the funk... I got the funk. With the Mm -hmm. funk, you get your Bruno Mars. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. You get a lot of, even now, Ed Sheeran stuff that he's... Since he's pulled away from his acoustic-y stuff and he's gone Mm. poppier. Uh, you get some of that with Justin Bieber. You get all of that kind of stuff with uh, with newer R and B kind of shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if we're talking the whole last decade, then for sure, like funk has just been like 
mm-hmm. pushed in there like bass wise and all that, like bass licks and mm-hmm. all that kind of shit that yeah we we're getting a lot of that and then i say 80s pop because it was it permeated almost every fucking genre in the 80s but mm-hmm. because of the a new the new technological innovation in the 80s with mm-hmm. synth and with modulation and all that computerized shit that that I think is the biggest fucking thing to influence the last 10 years of modern music because mm-hmm. you brought up Daft Punk and they started when the 90s yeah I think so it was so like late 90s so I guess they're a part of this like they're they're a part of the evolution of what is now mm-hmm. modern music of the last 10 years which took and share has a responsibility in this too. She can fuck herself, but, um, and T-Pain as well. Right. So like, mm-hmm. ev- so auto tune used to be, I know I've bitched about this before on the podcast, but this is a new segment that we have. So I'm going to bitch about it again. Auto tune used to be a thing that was like just a tool mm-hmm. in like the late eighties, early nineties, maybe even. Mm-hmm. And, it was like this interesting thing where you're like, oh, my God, I can fix that note. I don't have to re-record it. I don't have to waste tape. It, you know, For those who are still using tape, because in the late 80s mm-hmm. and early 90s, a lot of people are still using tape. They are pushing to digital, right? And so those who are still using tape didn't have to waste it. They could just like fix this because they, they'd process the tape digitally, and mm-hmm. then they would edit digitally, and then they would save themselves a fuck ton of time. And then Cher did that god forsaken it was in 1998 or 99 song yeah love love. that mm. fucking song hopefully that doesn't get us a copyright thing i just realized uh, but it's three seconds of the song <laughs> less than that but if like so when that song came out that whole thing was auto-tuned that whole track mm-hmm. was auto-tuned and it was weird it gave her this weird warble that it brought it first of all it made her relevant again after fucking 15 years of nothing yeah and then, uh, so that brought her back into the mainstream, and everyone was like, what? And then people like T-Pain took that, and were like, yeah, that's the new normal. Yeah, they and took then, it and ran with it to the nth degree, like, same with Kesha, too. Yes, which is too bad, because T-Pain has a great voice. And so does Kesha. Yeah. Now. Sure, least. yeah. I was gonna say, well, I've heard some of her tracks before Auto-Tune, and I'm like, ah! Yeah, um, but, but, like, you hear her do stuff now, like, and I've seen her do, like, acoustic stuff live, and I'm like, okay, she actually has a good voice, though. Well, that's good. Yeah. Um, But it's not good that it's all ending up auto-tuned and shit mm-hmm. in studio. So now that's the normal. Everything is processed. Everything is auto-tuned. Everything is fixed, right? I want to still hear those little fuck-ups. I want to hear the little things in there that mm-hmm. you're like, ah, it's not like... Fuck, if I, I don't want a perfect performance, I want to see something that's interesting. Yeah. And so, like, this, this is why people go to see bands live. They don't go to get a studio performance. They go because they want to have a moment of, like, oh, and he sang this differently, or, oh, she fucked that moment up, and that was, like, a whole, like, whoa, and then she just went with it, and it mm. made, like, this whole new thing, or they improvised this whole deal. Like, Yeah, exactly. It's, yeah, it's it's a, it's a different experience, and... and But everyone is so accustomed now to the studio experience. Like, when they someone releases an album... If, if first of all, if it's not pitch perfect, if the guitar has a buzz, if you know the vocals aren't just super polished, people are like, ah, it's kind of a shit singer, mm. or like, oh, well, they can't really play guitar, you know, or whatever else. It's like, I know you'll appreciate this. Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers mm-hmm. recorded on tape. Yeah, they did all their shit on tape, and that meant they had to do. Every song they recorded a million fucking times because the drums were too fast or Tom Petty didn't like that specific way he sang that thing. And so they had to do the whole song again. Right. Mm -hmm. Because they 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 do it on the floor, live, on tape, and then they cut that together. You don't hear that sound much anymore. Like you hear it from like independent artists who aren't all like the shoegazy fuckheads who put all of their ambient sounds in the. I'm singing a song and I was singing along and then I don't and I feel. You know, like yeah. that kind of shit. Whatever. But 
with like the stuff that it's actually really you can understand what's happening mm-hmm. and doesn't sound like mush mouth and whatever else like yeah that kind of stuff that's really pulled back in the independent world is great because it's just people who are recording their own shit mm-hmm. and that's all they know to do they haven't paid you know the thousand dollars for melodyne to auto-tune all this shit yeah, and like exactly. to, to fix everything and so it's just they you get a raw sound from them i love that i wish more people love that but the the top artists and the new normal is super polish and i i just don't like it because it's not real you hear them live unless they're lip syncing it's not super polish mm. you get those nuances you get different things right like if you're sitting around a campfire, it's not super polished. You're just hanging out. You're just playing music. Just give me the music. I want the real music. Like I know yeah. polish is still real music, but I want to feel that music more. And I feel it more when I hear and feel the musician feeling it more. And I don't get that when it's a fucking robot singing the goddamn mm-hmm. thing. And that's that's I, I I definitely agree with you on that. And like that's why I really gravitate to like a lot of artists like you know. Like Joel Plaskett or Ryan Adams, where both of those artists they they put out really acoustic shit, and it's just them. It's just them singing. Yeah, they're like you may hear a couple fuck ups in in there, but that's what makes it real. Is and, and I that's what I appreciate about their music is that yeah. they keep that stuff in there. It doesn't have to be perfect. I appreciate it mainly because I am not a musician to polish shit mm-hmm. like. I've been hanging on to an album's worth of music for a long time because it's not sounding the way I want, but the way I want changes depending on my mood, right? So like that's different. (laughs) And now I'm actually dropping the tracks and sending them to, to be, uh, to be engineered, but Mm -hmm. they're not going to be engineered with auto tune. That's for fucking sure. Mm -hmm. It's the main reason why when I went to record it last year, I couldn't because I went to do it with a bunch of guys who are going to be like a backing band, essentially like Mm -hmm. session musicians, essentially for it. And I just couldn't because they're like, oh, maybe like change that chord or like maybe, oh, well, you know, it, it's, it seems like this might not work with it because it, then it sounds too repetitive if it's a band doing the stuff and like mm-hmm. whatever else. And and I love I love all of those guys, by the way. They're all great musicians. They're mm-hmm. all better musicians than I am. And the, and their input was wonderful. But at the end of it, it's, I have played like bars and campfires and waterfronts and house concerts and shit Mm -hmm. all my life now and like for over 20 years of my life now Mm -hmm. and so i uh i know that's the sound i want yeah i want i want it to be as raw as possible because that's how i've affected people that's how i've touched people Mm -hmm. not like you know (laughs) but and not creepy like that. Mm. But uh, but yeah. So so my answer is, uh, and I think unfortunately so, is that um, 80s funk and pop music, and, and I agree with your 70s mm. twist with disco as well, yeah. are the, the most significant in terms of the, the evolution of the last 10 years of music. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't say that they... I can, I guess, I guess basis in that has revolutionized what music has been in the last 10 years. Yeah. Unfortunately, I don't think it's a good thing. So that's my answer. I dropped this mic, but it costs too much. Yeah, so, yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's, I think that's a great question. Yeah. And it really made me think. <laughs> Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. Um, so yeah, tune yeah. in next time for music mysteries. Ooh. Ooh. Well, cool. Thanks. For the question, Andrew, yeah. and send us your questions, everyone, if you find this remotely interesting. Mm-hmm. I find it interesting, but of too. course, it's because I'm the one thinking and talking about it and then listening mm-hmm. to you think and talk about it. So, well, I'm not listening to you think, but, well, yeah. sometimes, because you you often think aloud. But <laughs> And we want to know what you guys think about this question, too. So, you know, write in the comments your thoughts on this, because we'd love to know. She wants to know. I want to know. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, seriously, leave your yeah. answer to this question in the comments, mm-hmm. uh, send us more questions and we will get more of this out to you as much as possible. Mm-hmm. So until then, uh, we you know. will see you guys later. Swept Media. Gets
swept up in today's independent music. We'll have some sort of like title screen. I don't know. Like I'm, I'm gonna mm. fuck with it because I probably won't release this for a little bit, mm-hmm. and I'll just like play around. I would just be like Scooby Doo looking. Well, that's gonna cost us a lot of money in copyright infringement. <laughs> <laughs> well, never mind that. It was a nice idea. It's funny that you brought up Scooby Doo though, mm. because one of the examples I brought up of why autotune has happened so much and has become such a big thing with Cher. And did you know that when Sunny and Cher were still together, when Sonny was still alive. Mm-hmm. They did an episode of Scooby Doo together. Did they really? Mm hmm. I did not know that. Well, now you do. Now I know. You don't need to watch it. Yeah, that's fine. I'm probably fine not watching that. Cool. Mm-hmm. Sweet. Yeah? Yeah. Were you like throwing something at them? You can go fuck yourself. Like. <laughs> That's not what I was saying. Oh, I just heard what I wanted. Okay. Well, all right. 